So at Duke, we realized for a while that liver disease was, was certainly endemic in the U.S. population and likely to become a significant threat to health. And so we've been uh, positioning ourselves over a number of years to assemble a group of faculty that have expertise that are, is going to be very relevant to both diagnosing, preventing, and treating uh, the complications of advanced liver disease. So we have a spectrum of, of options available to patients who might come here, everything ranging from state-of-the-art, cutting-edge, novel diagnostic approaches, clinical trials, and then in people who are eligible, liver transplantation. It's been very exciting here at Duke to work with uh, some of our scientists who are also developing some novel therapies. Uh, Anime Deals Lab is, is working in, in uh, fatty liver disease, for example, and, and potentially identify new targets. And, and that then provides an opportunity for us to help develop these agents forward and, and bring them potentially into clinical practice. We're very proud to have been part of a lot of what's gone on hepatitis C, where these uh, new therapies that are coming forward are going to cure most people. And and, and we've been uh, had the rewarding experience to, to play a part in those studies uh, through, through our work uh, here at Duke. We hope to have the same experience in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and promiscuous and cholangitis uh, in the next decade. Uh, these are two major diseases that are impacting our patients and our clinics and, and we'd like to see uh, their care be improved. There are a lot of um, scientists who are vigorously working in the field of fatty liver disease and uh, new ways to diagnose and treat uh, this disease are, is needed. And we have also been participating in trying to find ways that herald um, injury within the liver. And there's a huge body of work that's been done investigating the um, keratin intermediate filaments in Mallory deep body formation and we have applied those stains to a um, broad array of human uh, liver biopsies and have shown that we can reproducibly identify the liver cells that have been injured and we think that additional studies can validate this type of, of staining. Here at Duke, um, we have a fairly large liver transplant program. We do about 65 liver transplants each year. Um, about a third of those are pediatric patients, which makes us one of the larger um, pediatric transplant programs in the country. So we've been really excited about our outcomes here over the last few years because um, we had uh, a long period of time here for about three years where we've lost very few patients. We've had excellent survival, about 97% of our patients have survived uh, their first year after transplant. We have a very dedicated small group of people that do the rounds and so very few things um, kind of fall through the cracks so to speak. We have a good team. Um, we have excellent hepatologists, excellent surgeons, excellent coordinators and by having all these different layers um, you know, and good communication between all the layers, we're able to catch things early. I would say that in liver transplantation, um, we have a number of areas that uh, we probably are much more familiar with than most programs in the country. And we have a long-standing expertise in the care of patients with uh, an inherited metabolic disorder called glycogen storage disease, and probably have the country's largest experience in transplanting those patients um, who both uh, have the risk for developing hepatoma uh, in that setting, but for whom the transplant also corrects their metabolic defect. In addition, we have one of the most active combined lung and liver transplant programs here at Duke. Uh, we have one of the largest lung transplant programs in the country and it's very often that we're called to work with our transplant pulmonology colleagues to evaluate and then hopefully successfully transplant uh, individuals who have both lung and liver disease together. We really are a regional and national leader in uh, post-transplant success for liver transplantation here at Duke. And in that regard, I think if patients are looking for the best care pre-transplant and the best outcomes post-transplant, uh, our team can offer that to them. Our ultimate goal is to return people to a high quality life and, and to extend their life as, as, as long as we can, giving them the best quality of life while they're living. And, and obviously this involves uh, things in some people that would, would hopefully prevent them from ever getting to the stage where we're talking about a liver transplant or needing to treat a liver cancer. Novel discoveries, both from our own laboratories and others uh, out in the field, and pharmaceutical industry are beginning to actually attack cirrhosis as a disease in and of itself. 
And the idea that you might be able to help somebody with cirrhosis completely recover is no longer just a dream. Um, it's been demonstrated to occur in patients with viral hepatitis who are lucky enough to be cured of their infection. So uh, with that inspiration, I think we are going to work very hard both to prevent cirrhosis like we've always been doing and treat its complications, but now I think we can actually say that we should no longer be satisfied with letting somebody have cirrhosis. We should be trying to cure it.